Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to my hotel room in Stockholm, Sweden. It is Friday night right now. I've been out all day. We started at like 7 o'clock this morning. I've been going all day and uh, doing paradoxy things at PDXCon. It's been the press day, sort of day zero of PDXCon, and this is the day where the press people got all the announcements about the new games. Now, assuming I have timed this properly, this video should go live tomorrow after everything has been officially and publicly announced, but I really want to record um, this video here. Uh, the big thing, I'm, I'm sure for people, are the fact of the new game announcements. Two new games have been announced as well as board games. Paradox is going into the board game publishing or partnership business. Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, City Skylines, and Hearts of Iron are all getting board game interpretations. And I'm really excited about it. I actually got to see the Crusader Kings board game today and tomorrow, or the day that you're watching this video, I should get a chance to see in person the City Skylines and European Universalis board game. The Hearts of Iron one is still in heavy development. Really excited about this. The Crusader Kings game in particular that we saw sort of um, uh, in person today looks really good. It's sort of like, imagine something like Risk, but with all like the dynastic amazingness of Crusader Kings where you're like worried about marriage and making babies and having events and comet sided and plotting to assassinate people while at the same time justifying uh, Casas Belly against people around your kitchen table. I think it's about three to five players. Really, really excited for it. Um, so anyway, there's that, two new gaming announcements, and three expansions for existing games. I'm sure people are here for the new games. Age of Wonders, Triumph Studios, which was, I guess, bought or merged with Paradox last year, has officially announced a new Age of Wonders game called Planetfall. Unlike being a fantasy game with previous Age of Wonders have been, this is actually going to be a science fiction game. Uh really exciting look at the game today. Um, specific impressions are still embargoed until a little bit later. I can't tell you anything other than the fact that it's been announced. Really, really, really good looking game. Has me excited in a way that um, while I liked Age of Wonders games before, this one it goes well above and beyond. I think it's going to be really, really fantastic. The other big game announcement, and this is from Paradox Development Studios itself, the in-house of the developer at Paradox, is... Imperator Rome, a new Rome game, is coming out from Paradox. This is not a sequel to Europa Universalis Rome. Um, it's not Rome 2 because they didn't really want to use that name and they didn't really want to use, you know, Europa Universalis because it's fairly different. But really, it's Europa Universalis set in Rome with a whack pile of amazing new trade mechanics and and people management mechanics, and a glorious new map, and you will be blown away when you see some of this stuff here. It is really, really going to be exciting. Um, huge, huge game. Amazing. Uh, designed by Johan, who is, you know, the brain be behind a lot of the stuff at Paradox Classic stuff, a lot of the European style stuff. It's going to be great. Uh, moving on to the expansions, we got an announcement that Crusader Kings 2 Holy Fury is going to be the next expansion for CK2, and it's going to be a big, huge, massive one. Uh, one of the things they want to do with it is reinvigorate the um, the crusading system. You know, put the crusade back in Crusader Kings. Um, lots of new options for pagan players, uh, including massively more detailed religious reforms, as well as the ability to customize your religion. Build your own religion is basically what we're talking about here. Amazing. Um, and um, also adding in legendary bloodlines like, oh, I'm descended from this guy who became a saint at some point, And this is hugely meaningful. And these may have been characters that I played, but did important stuff. Or if I'm pagan, I was like a legendary war hero and things. Uh, really, I think going to add a fantastic amount of extra flavor to already one of the most flavorful games in the Paradox um, library. Really amazing. Um, also announced was European Universalis 4 Dharma, a uh, new expansion for EU4 that is going to, based on its name, focus heavily on India, but not exclusively so. Uh, it's going to add a whole bunch of new peacetime mechanics, give you a lot more to do in peace, uh, which includes a lot of new government reforms, the ability to really develop and customize your government using... Um, um, uh, sort of a new resource that's not linked really to your, your standard monarch points, which is going to be very nice. Uh, lots of new policies 
And uh, yeah, really focused on relationship between India and the rest of the world. Obviously, as would be expected, lots of custom missions and things like that. And lots of changes to existing systems in a way that I think is going to be hugely fantastic for the game. Um, finally, the last announcement was Hearts of Iron 4 Man the Guns expansion. This one is still quite a ways away. It's of, of the three, it's going to be the last one that we actually see. Um, but uh, Hearts of Iron 4, which uh, recently crossed the 1 million copies sold mark, is going to uh, turn its eyes to a pretty dramatic naval revamp. Massive change to how you manage your navies, how naval combat happens, uh, in a way that's going to add a lot more depth. But at the same time, I think a lot more sort of clarity and intuitive behavior uh, should really mix up how you use uh, a variety of different ships um, from submarines to cruisers to battleships to aircraft carriers. I think it's going to make a dramatically huge change to it. It's also going to uh, have a pretty big effect on um, um, production and supply uh, being shaken up in a way that I can't, I don't think I can really be specific about right now. Uh, but the, uh, let's just say the resources that you're used to dealing with in Hearts of Iron 4 and the way that supply works is going to be pretty different come this expansion. And I think that's going to be really great. Uh, also it just adds a lot of new gameplay options in general, as well as taking a, uh, new kick at the can of some of the great democracies in the world. Um, and examples of that might be say the UK and the USA and a little bit of loving work on those folks to make them a lot more interesting. Uh, there's also going to be a new Hearts of Iron 4 Anniversary Edition that is going to become available. It's going to come loaded with all the DLC as well as some pretty sweet extra swag um, for collectors. And I think there might be like standalone copies of just like the swag part of this thing if you already have um, Hearts of Iron. So that's that. I'm going to wrap up the video here now. I can't give more than that in terms of specific impressions of the various games and expansions I saw today because of embargoes uh, and whatnot. We'll talk about it more later. However, because the board games are going to be playable at PDXCon, I am going to be able to give you more specifics about Crusader Kings, the board game in particular. I have a ton of pictures that I took from our sessions there, the complete rules, various bits like that, that I'm going to attach at the end of the video. Keep in mind that everything you see um, is is prototype stuff. It's stuff that like they just printed at the office and they, they took miniatures from like other board games and, and are using them as placeholder uh, like that. So what you see is literally not at all the, the physical components for the actual game um, because they literally haven't printed a single box of it at all and where they're not going to be for a while, but it should give you a sense of how the game plays and I'm really, really excited for it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.